From Channel 4, Dallas and Fort Worth, the 10 o'clock news with Chip Moody, Clarice Tinsley, Wayne Shattuck, and Dale Hansen. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Braniff International Airlines earlier today announced a system-wide layoff of up to 3,000 workers as part of the airline's joint agreement with Pan American to operate Braniff flights to eight South American countries. Tonight, Channel 4's Dave Tracy reports. At a Washington news conference today, Braniff President and Chairman Howard Putnam and Pan American Chairman Ed Acker announced a joint agreement that would see Braniff turn over to Pan Am routes to eight of its nine South American countries in exchange for $30 million. The agreement said Putnam would last for four years, and by 1986, he said, the airline could reinstate the South American flights on Braniff's schedule. As part of the agreement with Pan Am, 800 Braniff ground personnel in the eight South American countries would become temporary employees of Pan American. In addition, though, Braniff would lay off 400 flight attendants and 1,100 pilots and support personnel system-wide. The flight attendants who are, who are South American-based by country will have to be uh, furloughed and severed from the payroll. The pilots, which are based domestically in the United States, Braniff pilots, they too will have to go into a reduction in force. We'll also have reductions across the country as it affects the international operation in the gateway cities where we have grand ground manpower and so forth. By this summer, Putnam plans to lay off an additional 700 Braniff employees for a total of 3,000 layoffs cutting by a third the airline's 9,500-member workforce. In Dallas, Braniff officials could not say how many local employees would be affected, only that layoffs would not be as drastic as had the airline canceled domestic routes. In a normal domestic reduction, you generally get half out of the DFW area, but this is uh, very intensified within Latin America. The Braniff Pan Am venture is said to be the only way both airlines can survive without a government bailout. Last year, Pan Am losses reached $400 million. Braniff lost $160 million. The Civil Aeronautics Board and the foreign governments involved in South America would have to okay this venture before the layoffs would begin. Should Braniff give up those routes, the only international flights left would be to Hawaii and London, and they too are in jeopardy. Dave Tracy, Channel 4 News. And crippling losses in a not-too-bright future are forcing more layoffs at Dallas-based Texas Instruments. The huge electronics company today announced layoffs for 2,700 employees worldwide. That represents about 3% of TI's total workforce of 80,000. A TI spokesman says the layoffs would idle 650 workers in Dallas, 750 in Houston, 300 in Sherman, and the rest in the company's other plants scattered across the country. So it's rather clear tonight that even Fort Worth and Dallas in the heart of the Sun Belt have not been able to entirely escape the effects of the current recession. Local car dealers have seen sales holding up rather well compared to the rest of the nation. But a recent softening of demand for new cars in our area has dealers fighting back. Channel 4's Kelly Lane reports. Ladies and gentlemen, we take pride in announcing that Buick has been named the official car for the 1984 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. It's something new for the Metroplex, a car show where everything is for sale. And it comes none too soon. After getting off to a fairly good start this year, car sales in Dallas are slumping a little, about 8% from last year. So new marketing techniques were in order. Rebates worked. Now they're trying a variation on the take the product to the customer idea. Here you can see 400 new cars, different makes and models, all under one roof. A person can roam through here and in, in two hours accomplish what might otherwise take him two weeks in terms of just looking at all the various cars that are available in the Dallas marketplace. The problem is, some people are just window shopping. If you see one that you want, will you buy it? Uh, no, not right now. Why not? <laughs> uh, I can't afford one. But others are here to buy and a bit dazzled by the selection. Well, I've gotten confused looking at all the cars. I thought I knew what I liked, and now I've got about three of them I like. And it is confusing. You can have a TV. Wayne Shattuck will appear three times a day to give you the weather. You can buy a $70,000 car built to order or a Toyota Starlet for a little over $6,000. But the message here is buy. Dallas car dealers want the public to know they're out hustling. The Dallas Auto Show is flashy and it's fun. You get to see all the cars close up. But there's serious business going on here. Dallas auto dealers are hoping that the show is successful enough to spur sales 
straight through till summer. Kelly Lane, Channel 4 News, Dallas. In other news tonight, Dallas Police Chief Glenn King tonight is in serious but stable condition at Baylor Hospital. Earlier today, the 56-year-old chief suffered two heart attacks, the first in his office about 2 o'clock this afternoon, the second at the hospital. King has been Dallas Police Chief since May of 1979. He is seen here meeting last week with a crime-fighting group called the Guardian Angels. Until King can return to work, Executive Assistant Chief Jack Lavelle will fill the position. Police. There was international intrigue in a Dallas courtroom earlier today. Three men, allegedly involved in a scheme to smuggle military helicopters from Texas to Libya and Iraq, were arraigned in Dallas federal court. A sealed indictment, which was opened today, says the 15 armed Cobra attack helicopters were to have come from the Bell Textron plant in Amarillo, a sale valued at $15 million. In court earlier today, a U.S. citizen and two foreigners pleaded not guilty to charges of conspiring to violate the Neutrality Act. That act forbids the export of military arms from the United States without a license. The federal grand jury indictment says a total of seven men are involved in the alleged smuggling scheme. Two other suspects are under arrest in California. Trial for the three men held in Dallas gets underway two months from today. In San Antonio, the federal grand jury members investigating the murder of federal judge John Wood met earlier today, but apparently did not hear testimony from witnesses. Justice Department officials refused to comment on reports that indictments may be near in the nearly three long year investigation. As you may know, Judge Wood was shot in May of 1979. At that time, the judge was scheduled to preside over the narcotics trial of gambler Jimmy Chagra. For the past year, the grand jury has focused its investigation on Chagra and Charles Harrelson, a previously convicted hitman. A source close to the investigation says jury members plan to reconvene tomorrow. Chip? In Dallas City politics, the minority bid to create a third black seat on the Dallas City Council tonight has fallen short. Blacks had pushed for the third position on the basis of the 1980 census, which shows that blacks now make up almost 30% of the Dallas population. But the majority of the council backed the mayor's redistricting plan, which keeps only two black majority districts. The reasoning, blacks already have two of the eight single member districts, and anybody can win one of the three at-large seats. A ridiculous assumption, according to Councilwoman Elsie Faye Hagan. Blacks do not have the $200,000 on the war chest like you can pull together, like the former mayor and his opponent in the Folsom Weber clash. To, to run these at-large elections. So. The mayor's redistricting plan will be approved next week, and blacks say they'll take that decision to court. Well, with April 15th less than one month away now, you may have thought there's got to be a better way to do income taxes. Well, that's just what Texas Congressman Kent Hance has been thinking, too. And earlier today, he and six other representatives introduced a bill to simplify the way Washington collects money from taxpayers. The Hans plan would scrap the current federal income tax system and replace it with a low single rate gross income tax which allows for no deductions. Such a proposal, if enacted, would be expected to drastically cut back on paperwork for both the taxpayer and the federal government. Hans says his tax plan would distribute the tax burden more equitably. The Treasury Department will look into the possibilities if that bill is passed. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Yep. Just ahead for you on the 10 o'clock news, part two of a special series. Vicki Monk takes a look at the future of the rare whooping cranes making their home on the Texas Gulf Coast. Our series is entitled Matagorda, Island in a Storm, and it's coming next. body is a fit trim body so start a program of exercise and eating right and make dan and yogurt part of it which will give out first your old car uh, uh, or your money it's gonna cost you don't wait to find out Right now, American Motors wants to save you money on the new car you need. Until March 31st, American Motors will give you up to $800 over dealer trade-in for your car. And the older it is, the more it's worth. We'll even help if you don't have a trade. Ask about the used car retirement plan at your local American Motors dealer.
This is a test track and a test of a remarkable machine. It uses a fuel-efficient Honda four-stroke engine and automatic decompression for easy starts. It has a unique oil pump that improves lubrication and many other advanced features. The Honda Rotary Mower. Think of it, a lawnmower engineered by Honda. All right, time now for a special report. Conservation groups are currently marshalling their forces to fight a plan to turn Matagorda Island over to the state of Texas for development as a park. The conservationists are upset because Matagorda is part of the winter home for the nearly extinct whooping crane. But what does it matter whether or not the crane survives? Well, Channel 4's Vicki Mux has some answers to that question in part two of Matagorda, Island in a Storm. Now, you may wonder why there's all this hoopla over a great big funny-looking bird. Why people have spent millions of dollars to make sure the whoopers don't die off. Well, the whooping crane is the biggest bird in North America, and a whole lot of people just think it's pretty. For many, just the aesthetic beauty of the bird as it stalks the marshes is enough. Uh, for others, uh, just the idea that the whooping crane was placed here and occupies a place in these marshes and serves as a part of that ecosystem is a very strong reason. You might say the whooping crane is a sort of national treasure, just like the original U.S. Constitution or the Alamo, and that makes it worth protecting. And then, too, there's the argument we should try to save every species we can, because we never know which ones will provide some great service for the human race. After all, who would have thought an obscure fruit fly would provide the key to understanding genetic reproduction? Or that macaques would help scientists discover a vaccine against polio? There do coexist with us on this planet certain species whose value and application to mankind may not yet be realized. So let's not just wipe the whooping crane or any other species off the face of the earth without giving a little thought about the fact that they might provide some benefit to mankind other than we now realize. And if you don't buy those arguments, take a look at the economics of the whooping crane. The whooping cranes attract a tourist trade that brings an estimated $5 million a year to this area. And there's probably no one who knows the value of those birds on the tourist business any better than Captain Brownie Brown, skipper of the whooping crane. Captain Brownie's been steering his boat full of bird watchers out to see the whoopers for going on 18 years now. Something like 120,000 people a year make their way down here to look at birds, and Brownie knows the whooping crane is the star attraction. Now, folks, when these birds are out on flat ground, they stand around five foot tall. They have a wingspan around seven, eight foot wingspan. You got a whooping crane standing in the grass, looking towards us. Look behind him on the beach and say, one row is that, two row is that spoonbill. Captain Brownie is something of a star himself. With his old ship's cat, Hardhead, to help him steer the boat, Brownie's got time to entertain his guests with tall stories. Say, for instance, about his mating call for dolphins. Now, folks, I want to tell you something else I got on this boat. We got what we call a porpoise call. Now, this call here, we call it our mating call for the porpoise. At my age, I love to turn the mating call on. Uh, look, under, look down at the anchor. Stay down there. Right in the bow of the boat. As the ship whooping crane glides through the marshes, in between bird sightings, Brownie's likely to point to Matagorda Island and tell the tourist the state of Texas wants to take it over for a park. Brownie's worried about that, because after 18 years, he cares a lot about these birds, and he thinks the state will mess things up. I'm scared about them opening up too much uh, to the public. And that's someplace that's not bothered. There'd be too much traffic like there are on Padre Island and all. Tomorrow night, we'll tell you what the state wants to do with Matagorda and why a lot more people than Captain Brownie are scared. Vicki Monks, Channel 4 News, aboard the whooping crane. And still more news ahead tonight, and stand by for some changes in the weather. When Shattuck says we may be in for some precip, and we'll have the latest for you from northern Indiana, where rain and melting snow continue to cause problems. Stay with us. Hey, Tom, what you got? Tyson Chicken Quick. Tyson Chicken Quick? That's right. Tyson's got a whole line of tender, tasty chicken. That's quick and easy. There's breast patties, breast fillets, chicken with cheddar, chicken hoagies, chicken sticks, 
And we even have a turkey patty. What's your favorite? Oh, chicken with real cheddar. Hey, that's pretty tricky. Ain't no trick to picking Tyson chicken. Tyson chicken quick. Tender, tasty chicken. Quick and easy. Are we losing the war, George? Yeah, a war of the weeds. It's these dandelions and clover. Help is on the way with 33 Plus. 33 Plus contains a powerful weapon that roots out more than 33 of the toughest lawn weeds so you can win the war of the weeds. You got them, George! Use 33 Plus and win the war of the weeds. Another multi-purpose home and garden product from Spectrum. At American Airlines, we know that a fast trip through the airport is the best trip through the airport. That's why... One-stop check-in to save you time. And something more. Round trip and connecting boarding passes. And reserve seating in advance. Over 70 different makes of word processors. Could you choose the right one for your office? Here's help from CPT, a company that specializes in word processing. This booklet, CPT Takes the Mystery Out of Word Processing, has 20 pages of plain English with definitions, costs, everything you need to know to make an intelligent choice. And it's free. For your CPT buying guide, call 1-800-331-1000. Before we get to the local forecast, rivers rising toward record flood levels tonight are forcing massive evacuations in the Midwest. Hardest hit is Indiana's second largest city, Fort Wayne. Some 7,900 Fort Wayne residents have now been evacuated as sandbag dikes give way to high water. The battle is against three rivers, each cresting 10 feet above their banks. The flooding caused by days of rain and melting snow is expected to set some new records, exceeding the historic floods of 1913 in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And of course, we uh, here in North Central Texas got a good taste of flooding uh, last fall and uh, late last summer. Right. And uh, hopefully we won't see that again this year. Hope not. You do have some rain in the forecast with a chance of rain? We do. Uh, a slight chance of rain or thunderstorms tomorrow night. And then uh, even more definite than that, some really colder or at least cooler temperatures coming in for the weekend. We'll show you that in just a moment. But we want to show you right now, snap my fingers and there it is, our rundown of the current temperatures around the state at present. We have readings in the uh, 60s and the 70s over most of Texas, as you can see, even out in West Texas, readings in the 60s. Only one spot up in the pan had a little bit cooler there, 53 degrees coming out of Amarillo right now. And at present, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we have some current conditions. And I'd like to show you those current conditions right now. Cloudy skies, 75 degrees, our humidity, 74%. Our winds are out of the south at 15 miles per hour, and the barometric pressure 2994 and rising. Our early morning low is 65. High today, 83. We've had no precipitation in the past 24 hours. Pollution index out of Fort Worth today in the good range of reading of 42, but for Dallas up in the moderate range, 52. Although we were still over 1,000, we were down quite a bit from early in the week today, and our pollen count, 1314, that was the total. Let's take a look at the national weather map. First of all, we'll focus on Texas. You can see cloudy to partly cloudy skies, even fair skies over parts of east, south, and west Texas. However, uh, sea fog has developed, very dense sea fog in the upper coastal section. Travelers advisories once again posted there for tonight. However, it is dry over the Texas area. Closest precipitation is running from southern Utah down into southern California, mostly rain. Along the Nevada-California border, there is some snow, more snow up in Montana through North Dakota, and then east of that a little bit, mainly in Minnesota, there's a little bit of rain. And then in the vicinity of this funnel system, we have more scattered rain from about uh, Mississippi and Alabama to the Atlantic coast. Now, <laughs> this cold pocket of air up here is way up north, but it will be coming down. I think that's what will be bringing us cooler temperatures by the weekend. Temperatures across the country right now, for the most part, pretty mild. Our freeze line, though, has increased a little bit since 6 o'clock tonight. You can see dipping down into the northern Rockies and the northern western plains, also parts of New England. Now, our forecast for the next 24 hours, this is what we expect. The temperatures are the expected highs. This may be one of the last blasts of winter for parts of the Rockies and Northern Plains. They are expecting snow tomorrow. Then below that, a band of rain from Nebraska into the Ohio Valley down to Tennessee. So here's our forecast. This is the way it looks for us. Now, we're expecting partly cloudy skies for tonight with southerly winds at 6 to 12 miles per hour and a low of about 65. Now, for over tomorrow... Partly cloudy to cloudy, a slight chance of evening thunderstorms with southwesterly winds at 7 to 15, 
and a high of 82. Now for Friday, it'll be a few showers possibly in the early morning, then partly cloudy rest of the day, high of 75. And on Saturday, fairly partly cloudy, 67. On Sunday, it'll be sunny and 61. Now, Chip and Clarice, the luck of the Irish must be smiling on us today because look what I have got here for us tonight. Well, isn't that a trick? Let me tell you, maybe you can set this down between you and Clarice. Okay. The, the, uh, the deal here. I stopped at one of the uh, local coffee shops here in downtown Dallas earlier tonight, and those people were having a lot of fun, and they realized that we, you know, were working very hard. Right. So they wanted to send us some gifts. Uh, turn that around so we can see these flies. Wow, for for oh, Clarice, oh, such a pretty about. nice girl, sweet girl. She, they sent the green daisies. Oh, neat. You're such a fine loving guy, they sent you the balloons. Well, we can share the balloons. <laughs> well, don't for, feel left out. For me, they gave me uh, this gift. Uh, <laughs> they didn't explain why, oh. but uh, <laughs> that's awfully cute. You wear it well. Okay. Thanks for the forecast <laughs> and the flowers and the balloons <laughs> and the fashion show. Okay. <laughs> Once a year, right? right? A picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> Tonight from the world of sports, two local athletes say they're ready to leave town. And tonight the Mavericks play the Chi-Town Bulls and a basket was made tonight you simply have got to see to believe. Tim Healy's just ahead. I like shoes, but I don't live or die by them. On the other hand, my girls have to have just the right shoes or their popularity will fly out the window. That's why I'm glad about the Payless Spring Sale. They have good-looking shoes at good prices, and now their prices are even better. So they stay popular at school, I stay popular here. Now that's what I call a sale. This week, these Coasters Casuals are specially priced at $12 at Payless Shoe Source. Now pay even less than less. Jack in the Box introduces new Crescent Breakfast Sandwiches. Ooh. Let's compare them to the Egg McMuffin. Why not? Sure. Ours come four ways, with a fresh egg, cheeses, and your choice of ham, bacon, or sausage. Oh. They make it one way. Oh. Ours come on a buttery flake croissant. Oh. Theirs is on a muffin. Hold it. <laughs> a croissant compared to a muffin? You're kidding. What? New Crescent Breakfast Sandwiches from Jack in the Box. There's no comparison. Buy a new Olds Omega and get a $750 GM bonus check. Buy a new Cutlass Sierra and get a $500 GM bonus check. Or buy two new Olds Forenzas and get two $750 checks. Get your GM bonus check now at Dallas's six bold men of old. Ali, Butts, Freeman, Griffin, Willis, Modern. Well, after tonight, we definitely know that one of the Mavericks believes in long-distance calls. I showed this to you back in the editing <laughs> yes. room. Did you believe it? I didn't believe Wait it, Wait till no. the folks see this, but we're going to keep them in suspense for a little bit. In their almost two years of existence, the Dallas Mavericks hold the series edge over only two teams in all the NBA, the New Jersey Nets and the Chicago Bulls, the Mavericks' opponent tonight at Reunion Arena. Dallas 2-1 and one against the Bulls, entering tonight's ball game. First half of this baby was played even Steven. Here, Rolando Blackman with a steal, drives the length of the court for two for the Mavericks, while the other way, the Bulls' Ronnie Lester pours in two of his game-high 27 points. It was tied at 46 at the half, but oh, how it was tied. Watch this. Late in the first half, the Bulls score. Dwight Jones, 46-43 Chicago. The ball inbounds to Brad Davis. Watch this. From 80 feet, Swisheroo. Bulls coach Rob Thorne says, who spiked that guy's weedy? I don't believe it. Look at it again. I still don't believe it. Swift. Unfortunately, that momentum didn't do the Mavericks any good in the second half, mainly because of this guy, Ricky Sobers. 14 points in the fourth quarter, 20 on the game for Sobers. As the Mavericks went flat in the second half, Chicago comes on to beat the Mavericks the final 102-92. to Afterward, Wayne Cooper spoke with Channel 4's David Walker. Their, their shots started falling in the third quarter, and you know, we went on a dry spell. And before we knew it, we, we was down uh, eight or nine points. And it's hard to come back against a team like Chicago because they're so strong and can throw so many people at you. You know, they have seven, two, six, ten, six, nine, come off the bench, six, eleven, six, nine. And you know, it's hard to come back against a team like that, but they just wear you down. Indeed they did tonight. Meantime, the San Antonio Spurs in the dark played the Nets in New Jersey tonight. Boom, Buck Williams with two of his 22 points for the Nets. Ray Williams, no relation with 20. The Nets beat the Spurs tonight. The final, 93-90 to New Jersey. Elsewhere on the NBA scoreboard this evening, the Celtics have now won 13 straight after beating Atlanta tonight. 
Philadelphia defeated Washington. In overtime, Cleveland over San Diego. L.A. leads Utah at the half. Denver over Phoenix in the third. K.C. and Golden State just starting. University of Houston All-American guard Rob Williams has the flu. He missed yesterday's practice, returned to work today, but still said he felt a little queasy. Now, the Cougars hope Williams will be ready to go by Friday night when Houston plays fifth-ranked Missouri in an NCAA Midwest Regional game in St. Louis. We may soon be bidding farewell to a pair of this area's better-known pro athletes. Glenn Carano, for five years a reserve quarterback with the Cowboys, will go on the trading block next week and could be playing elsewhere in 82 if the price is right. Carano is frustrated over his lack of playing time and has asked coach Tom Landry to trade him someplace where he could be number one. Landry says he'll make every effort to do so, not only to appease Carano, but also because of the coach's belief in this young man, the budding potential of the Cowboys' other backup signal caller, Gary Hogaboom. Another individual seeking a new home in 82 is Ranger slugger Al Oliver. Oliver is upset that the Rangers won't extend his contract past 1985, and today Scoop officially asked the Rangers to trade him. A Ranger GM Eddie Robinson, after meeting with Oliver and his agent in Florida today, said that he would try to accommodate the 14-year veteran who is a lifetime 300 hitter. Oliver has mentioned six teams that he'd be interested in going to, the Yankees, Orioles, A's, Angels, Royals, and Braves, but he cannot veto a trade to any team. In exhibition baseball today, Oliver continues the beat, uh, two hits for Scoop, 18 for the Rangers, homers for Pat Putnam and Dallasite Bobby Johnson. Texas belts the Minnesota Twins 12 to 4. And Clarice, the Rangers are 6 and 3 so far in the spring. Huh. Kind of hate to see Scoop go. Uh, seems like they're starting to get the hitting together after a slump first couple games. Yeah. How about that shot, huh? Oh, unreal. Should have been, <laughs> been worth about six points. Huh? They'd have won the game if they'd have given them some <laughs> extra right, points. That's right, really. Okay, a closing note for you on this St. Patrick's Day, but first, this final break. You'll find over 300 chairs and 100 desks on display at Greenfield, from the most functional of the economical lines to the most magnificent of the best. And every item is marked with Greenfield's low cash and carry price. Forget discounts and those once-in-a-lifetime good deals and buy any day at real savings. How is that? Pretty good, Mr. Greenfield. But could you lower your voice just a little? Greenfield, 2800 West Mockingbird Lane. It's hard to decide what the best part about church's fried chicken is. Juicy. Deal. Juicy. Juicy deal. Juicy deal. Hey, here's America's first 1983 model, Ford's new size Ranger, a terrific pickup. And talk about confidence. Ford's backing this new Ranger with Ford Care coverage, which means you can't pay a penny for repairs or scheduled maintenance for two years. Virtually all you'll pay for is gas, and that's about the closest thing to cost-free driving you can get. Ford's 83 Ranger, tough, new, Ford Care coverage, there's nothing like it. And finally tonight, a look at St. Patrick's Day parades all around the world. And we may as well start here at home. In Oak Lawn, where a small but lively band of would-be Irishmen and women began their celebrations early at the annual St. Patty's Day Parade. And in New York City, it rained a bit today, but that didn't stop an estimated 200,000 who turned out to watch this country's biggest St. Patrick's Day celebration. 3,700 extra police officers were on duty in the Big Apple to maintain some semblance of order. And this day honoring the patron saint of Ireland was most certainly not forgotten back in the old country. A big parade through the streets of Dublin, a peaceful parade with no sign of the political violence which has plagued the Emerald Isle. That's a good note. Faith and Bagura, I believe. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I hear it all the time. I let him. <laughs> ah, time for us to wrap up tonight's 10 o'clock news. Remember, Wayne says tonight our low mid-50s, high tomorrow, low 80s, a chance of rain late tomorrow. Just ahead for you all in the family. So for Chip, Wayne, Dale, Tim, the Leprechauns, and the rest of the Channel 4 News team, I'm Clarice Tinsley. Thanks for the company. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.